everyone, Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. I am so glad to be on here today and I am hoping and praying that our connection will hold out because it certainly wasn't very kind on Wednesday. We are going to be talking about the importance of budgeting in our self-reliant and preparedness lifestyles and how our system is broken and how probably most of our mindsets are jaded as far as um, budgeting goes. And uh, I have a testimonial to share, and we will be doing a giveaway at the end of today's lesson for Dave Ramsey's Total Money Makeover. So in order to participate in that, you guys need to say, hey, I'm here. Um, let me know where you're from. I need to have communication with you because otherwise I don't know you're watching. And that is how I will be able to add you to the giveaway at the end. So make sure you chime in and join in and let me know you're here. And I'd like to know also how many of you are um, currently budgeting. You have a working budget in place um, in your home. Uh, I'd love to know that. And also uh, what types of successes and struggles you've been having uh, along those lines. Now, for those of you that are new to uh, our channel, my name is Tammy Treyer. My family and I live 100% off-grid in northern Idaho. We enjoy educating and sharing our knowledge with others. And you can find us sharing at treyerwilderness.com. And you can also find us educating on our lifestyle, the traditional and primitive skills we use, wilderness survival, autism, homesteading. Um, all those skills are being shared at treyerwildernessacademy.com. So... If you find these videos helpful, I do them every week, every Wednesday, 10.30 Pacific Standard Time on Facebook Live. Um, I may be expanding on that um, and switching things over to Patreon. You can find us at patreon.com slash Wilderness. And you can also find us on YouTube by going to uh, youtube.com slash Wilderness. So we are in those places. These are being replayed on the Facebook and archived on the Facebook page and also being shared on YouTube and on Patreon. So don't miss out on these. If you if you feel they're helpful, share them with others, get more people involved. We have an awesome community of, of like-minded people on here and the communications back and forth have just been amazing. So I'm really, really excited about that. And um, just have some really great things to share here. Um, as far as budgeting goes, um, I put a post out yesterday on, or the day before on Facebook asking um, if others budget and it was interesting some of the comments that I got there. Um, I do. It's not easy. It takes discipline. Um, old habits are hard to break and this is very true. Um, Teresa shared that and she says once you get on the straight and narrow though it's a really rewarding process and um, she's really excited to um, be able to uh, get her children and grand or grandchildren involved. Good morning, Tammy. Um, Cindy says working on a retirement budget and budgets for my children. Um, and uh, it is also um, important too. Um, Vicky says that we used to and then life got really hard and that we should have kept it up, but we didn't. And that's just it. When life gets hard, that's when it's going to benefit us the most. But it's hard. It's hard to stay in. It's hard to know what to do. And I feel like we are learning what to do through this process we're in. And that's why I want to talk about this and share this stuff with you guys. And I'm so grateful that you guys took the time to share these things with me. Uh, Mary says, I have for years. I uh, really keeps me in check on where my money goes. The most rewarding part is seeing my children manage their money wisely. Awesome, which is an, a byproduct of, um, you know, them watching you. So it's important. That's one thing that I want to really touch on today. You know, my parents never taught me money and shared stuff on money with me. And, um, you know, I felt like it was a school. The school didn't teach me, but really it's it's our job as parents because no school lesson is going to teach what we can as we live life. And to be able to pass that on to our children is really important. Tammy said she tried and failed every time, and, and I get that because we have tried and we have failed in some ways too. And I think right now I understand why that is, and that's what I'm going to touch on today. Um, 
And, and that's exactly what Tammy says. She knows how to budget, just not how to keep it working for us. And that's been our struggle too, Tammy, is that um, stuff happens, life happens. And then it's it gets really crazy. And I think that through a couple things that have been happening recently, I think I am seeing why. Um, Donna says... Okay, she says, we do not at the moment, but definitely need to, though. So, awesome. So, you know, we're all struggling with this. And one of the great blessings recently is that um, the Mountain Boy and I are taking um, Financial Peace University through one of the churches in town. Um, and I'm really excited because there are some things there that are connecting the dots. I got... Um, I read this book six years ago, five, six years ago, and at the time, the day I was reading it the most, it's one of those books that was really addicting to me because I um, wanted to learn as much as I could. I just didn't feel like we were on the right track. I liked his podcast. I like what I've heard from Dave. This book was gifted to us, so I was I was diving in, and we were milling on the on the sawmill that day. And when you're milling, the mountain man is walking, pushing the mill. It's a slow process till it's time for me to remove either the slab or the new piece of wood off of the mill. So I was like reading and throwing the book, reading and throwing the books to try to keep up with the process, but. It put us on track, and I think that had we not been doing that, um, we would have been in a worse situation when my illness set in. Um, and also, I've shared before that our lifestyle, oh gosh, guys, I can't tell you enough how much right now in our situation and how it has set us up. So I will share more with that. Tia says, I'm learning so much from you. Thank you. Oh, and God bless you too. Thank you so much. I'm glad to know that. Um, and guys, really, I love you guys. This is, this gives me purpose, but it's, I just feel like God has blessed me with the content every time. I have a lineup of content coming that I feel very compelled to share also. And I feel really strongly about this because our circumstances have made it very clear to me that, um, our system is really messed up. Our system is really broken. In 2016, when I went through my surgery, we ended up going six and a half months without an income. Uh, the mountain man was taking care of me. Um, and, and you know, guys, illness is really rough on guys because they're fixers. And when they can't fix and, and, and correct things, they just tend to sometimes, well, I'm, I'm not going to say most, but majority, um, tend to get angry because they want to fix. And it was just a really rough, rough time. Um, one of the blessings, I've mentioned this multiple times, is that we homestead. We live off the grid, we live frugally, and we are prepared. We prepare, prepare for our future all the time. Every day we are making an effort to prepare for tomorrow, to prepare for three, day, or three days from now, three years from now. And I've been reading Leviticus and... and um, and, you know, from, I've been reading from the beginning of the Old Testament. And one of the things that really stood out to me is that um, God said on the seventh year you need to leave your fields go. And you need to trust that um, your food from the sixth year will carry you through to the ninth year. And that's basically, I just kind of chuckled to myself because we are still li living off of the food cash that we had from 2016. We have put some into it a little bit as we could. But... You know, when you, God wants us to be prepared and he will take care of us, but we also have to make an effort. And I really believe our lifestyle is the key there to, you know, living the unex living through the unexpected. Because like I said, we are living through that, through that food cash and we harvest our meats and I want to be, I'm excited. Um, Two days ago, I Wednesday when I couldn't do my live video, the mountain man and I went hunting when he got home, and I got a mule deer. So I am very excited. I'm going to be sharing pictures later on Instagram. But 
mule deer is amazing meat and uh, was real excited to get that to put in our freezer this year. So by harvesting and foraging and, and, and putting our canning and our preserved foods on the shelf, we are helping ourselves for the unexpected. And trust me guys, it has been a blessing. We have never gone without a meal. We were just about out of meat and a friend blessed us with meat till hunting season uh, opened up. And I know that the same happened for Tammy. That's just such a blessing. Um, and, and, and truly, when we take care of ourselves, God does also take care of us, you know. And, and the more we take care of others, the more God gives back to us. And it shouldn't be that we're doing that, expecting that. It's just how it works. Oh, yes. Thank you. Tammy said she's so glad I got the deer. And Tia says, I was diagnosed. Okay. Evidently, my eyes are doing wonky things today. So big eyes are going on. Tia says, I was diagnosed with... Chandra coma. I'm not sure what that is. And I had a skull surgery in April followed by radiation and treatments. We also have a special needs 11 year old son and we struggle daily. The only hope I have is my faith in God and am grateful that it is still strong and keep it strong sister. That is awesome. You are already a warrior. You are already a warrior with and, and, and pulling into God is the key thing in every situation in life. I will be praying for you, sweet friend, and I am so grateful that you shared that. And that is a huge testimony because when we are going through these valleys, no matter what they are, God will provide, God will strengthen us, God will carry us through. And having a special needs child is not an easy feat. God chose you, sweet friend and knew that you'd be strong enough for that journey. I don't know if you know, but our mountain boy is uh, high functioning autistic and with te Asperger tendencies. So, you know, there's purpose in everything. God chooses us for this journey and um, your son will be very blessed by having you. So, and and how are you doing from your surgery, Tia? That's, that's quite something. Awesome, Tammy, thank you. I need, uh, we've got great prayer warriors here, Tia. Um, Tammy, I know we'll be praying for you, as she mentioned. And guys, I want to share something with you. Um, many of you have been praying for Pat Kenny, who is an extreme dear friend of ours. And honestly, if it wasn't for him, I would not have gotten my mule deer this year. He has lent us his four-wheeler last year and this year. Um, it just sits in his garage, so he has blessed us with that to use out here. And had he not blessed us with that, I never would have gotten a chance at a mule deer because it was way, way high and behind a gate. So um, it was just awesome. So, But Pat Kenny um, is um, on his second round of chemotherapy for cancer that is incurable. But he's been having problems with his heart failing as a result of the chemotherapy. And um, I'm going to share his testimony today. This is just awesomeness. I could just feel such a difference in him just texting me today that just made my heart uh, scream and, and just brings tears to my eyes. Um, he was at the, the hospital and they removed three gallons of fluid from him. So I know how like, I feel like mud when I gain seven pounds of inflammation. Imagine that that's 24 pounds around. And, um, so to be able to go, as he put it from death's door to feeling good again, that is just such a blessing. And that is a result of your prayers, guys. So I am so thankful for you guys for being willing to pray for him. He is such a dear friend of ours. And that is just huge. So please continue to keep him in your prayers. And Tia, you got our constant prayers also. That is just, I'm so thankful that you shared. And, and, and that's it, guys. Our faith, as I tell you every week, when you can build your faith muscles, you can get through anything. It's gonna, not going to be easy. I, I guarantee you that. It won't be easy. But you are guaranteed that he is listening to your prayers. And that is just so important for you to understand. And the stronger we have faith and trust in him, the closer your walk will be, the more amazing your walk will be. It's just, it's just awesome. It's an awesome place. And trust me, you know, we go through rough spots, but I am just so grateful for what God does in our lives and, and, and how much he has blessed us through this journey. And that's why I feel it's so important for me to share our testimony, to share what's been happening. And, and also, to, today is important to me because I really need you guys to understand how our system is broken and how it is dependent on us. Um, for those of you that have not watched it, 
it's still available, you can go out and watch Transcendence. Go to treyerwilderness.com slash transcendence. It's very eye-opening. And um, Tia, you will especially like it. There's a lot of good health tech take techniques and good takeaways. Um, but I want you to, to go check that out. Today is the day five is available, but you can still watch the previous ones and it'll be available this weekend. So please don't miss that. An example of how our system is broken is in 2016, we went six and a half months without an income. We had nothing. And just before we even went into 2016, we got to Georgia for my surgery on faith and faith alone. Um, we were blessed by many people assisting us. Um, our hotel was paid for in Georgia. Uh, a fundraiser was set up and it covered our airfare and that was huge and some food. And um, we got there on faith. It was totally on faith. Uh, God diagnosed me. God told me what doctor to use. And she was how many thousand miles away? You know, 3,000 miles away from us, roughly. So we made it there on faith. And um, we went six and a half months without an income. And people were encouraging us to try to get help for ourselves. So I tried. I tried to get help. That's what it's supposed to be there for, that we could maybe get food, um, whatever. And believe it or not, we did not qualify. And I'll tell you why we didn't qualify. We had a, we don't have any new vehicles. We have an 01 GMC that has got almost 300,000 miles on it. And we've got a 1989 G, uh, Chevy 3500 that is in pieces and in parts. It's running right now. At the time, it wasn't. Um, it's our homestead truck. The mountain man MacGyvers it all the time to serve purposes here. It is our plow truck that he uh, rigged a plow to. Um, we also have a snowmobile. It's not running properly, and it wasn't running properly then either. We don't owe anything on any of them, but because we have those assets, we had too many assets, and we did not qualify for help because we have old beater trucks and no loans. We weren't in debt enough to get help. How sick is that, that our system is that backwards? If I would have had all brand new cars and I had loans on all of them out the wazoo, I would have been able to get help. But because we live frugally and cautiously and carefully and don't tap into the system, we couldn't get help. But we're also not running up all the interest rates and helping the government to bring in all that extra money. Our system is broken, guys, and the only way we are going to be able to take care of ourselves as if we think for ourselves. So that also pertains to budgeting. Dave Ramsey's theories are solid. He himself had to file bankruptcy. And when he filed bankruptcy, what he teaches is what he learned. And what he is teaching is awesome. He is helping millions of people all over the country get out of debt. And the key is for us to not have debt, guys. Now, some of the things that people have mentioned to me is that it's a struggle to budget. And I'm going to ask for a raise of hands here. When you're budgeting, do you have tithing in there and do you have saving in there? Now, I'm going to share something with you. Three years ago is when we started tithing first. We were always tithing. That was always very important to us. But we weren't tithing first. We had tithing and saving on our budget, but out of fear, they always ended up at the bottom of the list. How many of you is that true for you? That you have it on the list, but it's at the bottom. Or it gets pushed to the bottom because you're fearful that you're going to need that money for something else. We were there. But three years ago, we started tithing first. And I've shared that in testimonials with you throughout the year that I gave my last $100. And I have bills due, but God provided. Always. And I shared with you how a couple weeks ago... My minister, my pastor, knowing our circumstances and knowing our situation, said that I was encouraging his faith by me doing, by giving that last amount of money we had. And God provided. God provided greatly. And that is the mistake we make when we're budgeting. We are called to tithe first. We are called to tithe 10% of what we make. It should be the first thing we do. Without hesitation. That is building your faith muscles, guys, right there. There is nothing more strong that's going to build your faith muscles between finances and health. 
Those are the two things that really build faith muscles. You have to do that. And once you start doing that, you will see a total shift in your thinking, a shift in your life, and it's all going to be positive. It's going to be scary as heck because most of us are very afraid when it comes to money. But it is one of the most important and most powerful things we've ever done for ourselves. And I want to encourage you guys to do that, to start tithing first. The other thing is, Dave Ramsey puts it this way, we need to pay ourselves next. And that's really true. And this is why we all screw up when it comes to budgeting and why we can't make it work and why we end up in these squirrely situations in a panic. How many of you today, if your truck broke down and you had to spend even $500 to repair your truck, would you be totally stressed out and wondering where that money came from? We would. We would for certain because we're in a really bad spot right now. But that is, that's how we've been for the last three years. And the thing is, the last three years have been tough for us. And I don't know that in these last three years we could have done anything different. But the years prior we could have. And the thing was, we weren't tithing first. And we weren't saving first. And that is how we screw up. If we would be saving, Dave Ramsey tells you to put a $1,000 emergency fund away. If you had a $1,000 emergency fund today and your truck broke down and you needed a $1,000 part and repair, there you go. There's no panic. You'd have to rebuild your $1,000 emergency fund, but that's because you're going to make that happen first. You're going to pay yourself first before you put money into other things. You're going to make sure that that... You know, you're going to cut out eating out or you're going to cut out entertainment to make sure that you get your $1,000 emergency fund built back up. The other thing is, he says, your emergency fund is tithing, your emergency fund, and then saving. If you can get three to six months worth of your bills set aside and stuff happens, you won't have to panic. And that's where most of us live out of. We live out of panic. We live out of paycheck to paycheck. And we are living off of credit cards. We have not had credit cards for two years now. And it is a blessing. It is a complete and total blessing. Our society makes you think that the 0% financing till 2020 is just the best way to do things. But none of us have control. Or we put our emergencies on there and keep putting our emergencies on there and keep putting our emergencies on there. And we're never saving. We're never setting aside so we're just getting swept up into the government's mess. They want people in debt. They want people depending on them. Where if we are able to provide for ourselves, we are able to feed ourselves, we are able to provide for ourselves, and we are able to live with less and live simply and be prepared financially as well. We, we can get through anything, guys. It's the part that, that's the part that we're missing. And that's the part that we are going to really hold tight to right now and get ourselves back on our feet. And that's why I wanted to give this book away. This book is very v filled with all kinds of really great information. And the thing is, we are, we are so frugal. There's not any places that we can cut corners anymore without selling any, without selling something. And that's what we're doing. We're selling stuff that we don't need. It's stuff. It's stuff that doesn't matter. It's stuff that's just weighting us down. And like I mentioned previously, guys, the yard sales I've done and getting rid of the things that I've done has brought on so much inspiration. It's unbelievable. And I love it. And um, it's getting me to do things I haven't done in a long time. I've been doing a lot of leather work. Later today and tomorrow, I'm going to be preparing my mule deer skull so that I can do a um, European mount on it. And I'm going to be brain tanning my hide. So, good morning, Mike. Glad to have you joining me. So, guys, this is the key that we are missing out on, is that we get pulled in. I mean, it's so easy. You go to Walmart, just or even the grocery store, and there's so many things on the shelf, so many things. It's marketing. It's marketing of credit cards. It's marketing of stuff and thinking that it's going to make life easier. I can tell you guys it doesn't. We are living in such a way, I don't feel like I need anything. And, and I enjoy using what I have. And, it, and it, it does hurt me 
it hurts my, my pocketbook and it hurts me if I have to purchase something because I don't want to, I, I, I don't have the need and that's what's enabling me to live a lifestyle of simplicity and, and being frugal. And if you don't want to live that way, you can still budget and still prepare and still have money that you will eventually be able to get rid of credit cards and not have to worry about them. And that's our goal. That is our goal completely to have a savings so that next time, and like I said, in our circumstances in 2016, we could have had three to six months worth of stuff of, of our expenses saved and it may have helped us, but it still wouldn't have helped us with the medical debt that we incurred. So stuff does happen. You do end up in these places and, and it is what it is. The thing is, though, as Tia said, you need to have faith. You need to have faith and keep your faith strong, and you'll make it through anything. And you need to seek God for the answers. Guys, honestly, um, he, he provides answers. I've constantly been telling you to take time and seek the quiet. And um, one of the things through, that I learned through tr Transcendence this week was breathing. Um, there is a fellow on there called Wim Hof, and he controls his mind and his body through breathing, and it was really impressive, and it really encouraged me to seek that a little more and to uh, pursue that. Um, I was doing some of that in my healing uh, just recently, actually, with breathing and cold showers. And I know that sounds crazy, but it is very good for the body, and I've been doing that this week, and I've been seeking that. And during that, I've been also in the quiet. And while I'm breathing, God is always, when I'm in that quiet, God is always blasting me with ideas and, and information. And it just catapults us. It catapults me. It, it, it's the missing link to what I was seeking. And it just always excites me greatly, you know. And that's, that's what we need to seek is that quiet that is where, where God will speak to us. When we were racing around like a fool in panic and fear over finances and health and, and everything under the sun, we're not in a healthy environment. We're not healthy at all. We're causing our body to stress and to go into panic and fight and flight mode. And we'll, we, we can't hear that still small voice. So I want to encourage you guys to really sit down and put a budget together. In the description below is a link to Dave Ramsey's budgeting worksheets. They're free. Oh, cool. Tammy's been watching Transcendence and said it's interesting. It is definitely very interesting. And their food matters. Um, if you um, e join through the email, you'll get their emails. And one of the th bonuses you get is being able to watch Food Matters. That is extremely powerful. You know, our food is so toxic and people don't realize how that interferes and affects our health and our minds and everything else. And I'm telling you guys, when you can get clean on your diet and you seek God wholeheartedly and you trust him and have faith in him and you do your own due diligence to things that keep your household running smoothly, such as a budget, your life will be so much easier. And it's really important, guys, in a family that you have communication. It should be both spouses involved in budgeting. It shouldn't be just one or the other. You both need to be involved. Budgeting can be really stressful. And it's also important that both parties acknowledge where you're at and where you want to go and where you want to end up. So it's important that you guys do this together. And that could be hard. Not everybody's always willing to do that. But man, if you can do that and, and communication in the family to know who's responsible for what and what needs to get done and that we're all working together, those are so, such key components to a family and a home running like a well-oiled machine. And when it is like that, there's so much less stress, right? And it's not, it's not like that all the time. You know, every home has its hiccups. Every home has its struggles. But the more you can focus on that, the better the results. And I really, truly feel that way. So use those forms below and, and start creating a budget for yourself. I will tell you this. My biggest struggle has been running all these multiple businesses and trying to budget and then trying to budget our personal. It's very difficult to 
have so many different avenues to keep track of and I'm working on that myself and on what I'm working on right now is trying to just nestle it all together as far as the budgeting go budgeting as far as budgeting goes I am trying to get it all together maybe it's coming from different accounts but when it comes to the big picture and the the whole picture I'm putting it all together I'm experimenting there because that has been my greatest struggle is trying to keep it all straight and and if you can avoid having all that I encourage that for you because <laughs> it's too much to try to keep track of four businesses and then our home our personal stuff but when we get a handle on this and we try and we make an effort and guys trust me Dave Ramsey mentioned something in something I was watching yesterday where they had their vehicle breakdown and it was, uh, I think he said $9,000 to repair it. No, that's not true. It was $1,700 to repair it, and they had $9,000 sitting in their checking account. And they, they took the vehicle to get repaired, and they drove away with the rental car, and they both just looked at each other and, and realized how weird that was, that there was no car drama, there was no money drama, that they were just able to pay for it. And, and not stress over it. And that's where we all need to get, is to a point where when stuff happens, we're ready for it. And even if you don't have a lot of money to put away into savings, every little bit that you put there will continue to make things grow. And that's why I encourage you to follow Dave Ramsey. He's got a podcast. He's got um, his website, DaveRamsey.com. He's got a lot of books. So if you learn better through video, there's videos available. If you learn better through audio, there's audio available. If you learn better through reading. So it's all available to you. And I, I do know that sometimes when it comes to stuff that we're not really good at or that we struggle with, it's hard to wrap our head around it. So I'm finding great benefit to taking this class and watching the videos. So maybe that could be part of your struggle too, is that, and sometimes people overcomplicate things. So these forms are simple. They can't get any easier. And between that and putting the book together with it, that's key. So guys, I want to share a little testimonial with you. Not sure how to broach this. I didn't want to um, broach it last week. Uh, I felt it was a little early. Um, but as you know, we've been trying to sell our house. We've been trying to sell my truck. I've had my truck listed since January. And the hardest part of our faith muscles is God's timing. As many of us know, right? Yep. Give me a heart for that. It, it's God's timing. And God's timing is not always our timing. And that's very difficult for us, right? Because... We're waiting for healing, we're waiting for money, we're waiting for changes, we're, you know, we're waiting for our dreams to happen, but we have to wait on God's timing, and, and God's timing is priceless, um, and there's always purpose in it, regardless what it is and whether we ever know what that purpose was. But um, our largest debt has been an extreme weight to us this year. In a lot of ways not just the amount and the weight on our shoulders but the debt was something that was um, nagging at us every month every month we had um, it would go either way one minute they were working with us and we had peace and it was okay and the next minute they're not working with us they're gonna sue us it's been like that since January well, actually, it's been that way since November. So it's like this constant up and down and this constant stress. And I'd get emails and and it would just make my heart stop or do this weird thing every time I'd see it come across my phone. It was and and as much as you try to put that stuff out of your mind, I do. But then it's like this constant up and down. You don't know which direction you're going in. You don't know what's going to happen next. Well, I told you a couple weeks ago I sold my truck. That was such a blessing, and God blessed us greatly with the sale of that truck. We were very fortunate the way things worked out. And with the sale of that truck, we were able to take care of this debt. And it worked out in our favor. Uh, God blessed us greatly with that. And the removal of that weight has been extremely huge and one of the ways that we were able to progress with that I feel is because we prayed regularly 
for that debt. We prayed for the people that we were dealing with, that they would feel God's grace, that God would soften their hearts, that God would help them to understand that our situation is dire and that you can't get blood from a turnip or a stone, no matter how hard you try and no matter how hard you threaten and, 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 uh, badger and, and just hassle at the end of the day, our circumstances are still the same. And it's, it's really hard in those situations because no matter how strong our faith is and no matter how um, strong we are, the enemy is still going to use every possible tactic. And I'm going to share this with you. The day we sold our truck, the next day, we got a, a message that if, if we don't produce a certain amount, we are going to be sued. And it was just funny. That was an email that um, made me laugh because that was the enemy just trying to weaken us after we just had a huge celebratory moment where my truck was sold. And I don't have a, a set of wheels. I can't get around unless somebody can take me. And you know what? I'm perfectly okay with that. I am going to walk to places. I um, haggle rides with my mountain boy or the mountain man. But I just stay home. I don't really have much of a desire to do anything. And um, sometimes that's what some of us need is, you know, to be home. Uh, a lot of us might have spending issues that when they're out, they have to spend. I'm not like that, uh, but I love the comforts of my home and I love to be able to do things here. So selling of that, I'm, I'm okay with it. Um, it was our most reliable vehicle. I'm okay with that. Um, I know that God will provide what we need when we need it, if we need it. So I'm, I'm not worrying about that. It was, there was no separation anxiety. There was no struggle in parting with it because I knew that through selling that truck, it was going to get us much further ahead. So those weights have been lifted. I'm going to share with you what that means. Had those weights not been lifted, we would have had to file two bankruptcies. We would have had a close Treyer Wilderness and we would have had to put the house in the bankruptcy. We would have then had 24 days to remove ourselves from this property. We would have lost all our tools, our sawmill, our backhoe, and we would have had nothing to enable us to rebuild. And then there would have been criteria for us to follow. I can't buy another house. I can't rent another house because if there's mold or toxins in there, I will, I will just be flat on my back. I will be so deathly ill. And we're heading into winter. So we didn't have a whole lot of options and it was very stressful. It's been that stressful for probably the last three months of just the unknown of what is going to happen and what we needed to do and making those decisions and they are heavy. Um, it's bad enough to have to file one bankruptcy, let alone having to do all of that. So by getting rid of that debt, we don't have to go through that process. We may still need to file bankruptcy but we don't need to go through it in that drastic of a fashion. So God has blessed us greatly. And that is through the power of prayer and through faith and through trusting him. You know, when we continue to work towards a goal and we continue to make an effort to change things, God's going to meet you. It may not be when you want him to, but God is going to meet you. And that is just so, so incredibly important for you to realize that you, need, you may need to wait, but God does hear you, and he does hear your prayers. And the stronger you get in your faith, the less stressed and struggle you will have through these valleys. I will be completely honest. There were days. There were days that it was really hard to get out of bed. It was really hard to function. It was really hard to um, focus. But at the same time, I don't like being in that place. So I get up and I say, this day is going to be great. And you know what? They were. I made them that way. We have the power to do that. We have the power to make each day, each minute, what we want it to be. If we're strong enough and if we care enough and if we want to make that change. Jackie says, God will make a way where there seems to be no way. Keeping the faith, waiting on God's timing. Amen. And he will. He will, and that's what we are totally trusting him for. And you have seen, as he has progressed through this year, what he is doing in our lives. And um, I can't, I've never had such strong faith. 
I mean, this has been a very, very rough time because there's all of us in the family. We're all affected and we all go like this at different times, which is a blessing because when the mountain man's down, I'm up. When I'm down, he's up. And God is good, you know, that we help each other. And that's why I shared what I did today um, on Instagram, that as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. That's Proverbs 27, 17. You know, there's so many ways we can sharpen each other. When we're down, um, when we see uh, excellence and we commend, you know, there's so many ways we can be of help to each other. The mountain man and I, I love our relationship where his expertise level stops, mine picks up and vice versa. We complement each other and that's what we're meant to do. And, and we're meant to sharpen each other. Gonna share something else with you. I was wondering how if this would fit in today, and God opened the door for it to fit in here with what I'm saying. Um, somebody shared this with me this week, and I love it. Um, as far as being able to control um, our 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 days, our minutes, our lives, we are in control of that. That is the only thing we can control is us and how we react and how we behave and how we feel. We can change. We we. You can't allow other people to control that. You can't expect other people to give you happiness because that's an expectation that's going to fail you all the time. You need to have that expectation of yourself that you can make yourself happy and that you can make yourself joyful and that you can lift yourself out of the murk and mire just as easily as anybody else can. You just have to have faith in that and trust in yourself and also have resources available. I've been sharing this with you all year because I've needed them. I need my Bible. I need my devotional. I need positive music. I need positive podcasts. I need those things. I'm no less human than you guys are. I get down. And with our circumstances, it could be easy to be down and in a corner rocking every day. But I'm not going to waste my life. And this is what I'm going to read to you. Imagine this. If you had $86,400 in your account and someone stole $10 from you, would you be upset and throw all of the remaining $86,390 away in hopes of getting back at that person who took your $10? Really? We wouldn't. Or would you move on and live? Right, you'd move on and you'd live, right? So see, we all have 86,400 seconds in each of our days. Don't let someone's negative 10, 10 seconds ruin the remaining 86,390 seconds of your day. Don't sweat the small stuff. Live, life is bigger than that. And the thing is, one thing else I want to mention in that is that if someone else is having a bad day and their bad day is an all-day bad day, it doesn't have to be your all-day bad day. You can still be happy. You can still smile. If you laugh and smile and it makes that person matter, you can't control how somebody else reacts, but you can control you. You control whether you're happy. I am not sacrificing my happiness and my joy because of someone else around me. And that applies at work, at the grocery store, anywhere. You are in control of you. And through this, I have found my happiness. I mean, this is one of the worst things we've ever walked through. But I can say that I've found my happiness. Getting out and hunting and being in that quiet has been so rejuvenating. I think I shared with you how I was out and there was elk. And they were like not even 50 yards away from me. And looking right at me. I mean, I, and I actually started walking up on them closer. When they would turn their heads, I kept getting closer. To be that close to those big animals, and there was like six, I think there was six cows and two calves that day. And just to be able to be that close and just to take it all in. You know, we need to get out. We need to enjoy nature. We need to get out of these boxes we live in because, because. You need the fresh air. You need the rejuvenation. You need to be out there with God. Uh, we, where we were hunting the other night, we were up above everything else. There were clouds with us. There was snow falling where we were, but there was not snow down below. The views, the, the area, the, and even if you just have a small park near you, get out in the park. There's lots of leaves on the ground right now before the snow flies. Lay in the leaves. Just make sure there isn't any dog poop in it if you're in a park. <laughs> 
But seriously, guys, we got to be able to not sweat the small stuff and truly strengthen our faith muscles. You know, we never know what tomorrow is going to bring. We don't know what a minute from now is going to bring. But what we do know is that we can control ourselves and we can make efforts and we can every day make steps to be more prepared so that when we have life's hiccups and upsets, that we're not struggling. And also that we have a community like we do here that we can help one another and cheer each other on. That Proverbs 27, 17 isn't just for spouses. It's for all of us. We need to sharpen each other. And we need to lift each other. And, and I know that we are not the only ones struggling. And that's why I'm being so transparent. I've shared with you before. There were things that we experienced when I was going through my um, illness before my surgery that I so wish I would have shared with you and would have been able to share with you. Of course, I couldn't hold a conversation to save my life then, but I still wish that I was writing or doing something that you guys could have seen it. And that's why we're being as transparent as we are this year. And I know that we will help others, even if your struggles are different. You're still struggling at times and to be able to have resources. You know, in preparedness, they tell you to have your, your bag by the door. And, you know, we have our bag. And, and we practice carrying that bag so that when the need arises, we can. But there's so many aspects to preparedness, and it all starts with faith. It all starts with knowing what to look for or who to look at when we are in a spot and it all starts there and again in any aspect of preparedness it's also us doing our due diligence and our research and making the effort God won't meet you if you're sitting on a couch eating bonbons I guarantee it he might make your struggle a little worse trying to encourage you to get up but we can't sit in the corner and rock and it's okay to do that if you have to I've had days and, and we're allowed to have a day, but don't stay there indefinitely. Grab a hold of the resources I share with you. Grab your bootstraps. Reach out to me if you don't have anybody else. But we can get to, through anything together, and we can get through anything if we have our focus on the right things. And, and like I said, don't feel bad if you're in the corner rocking right now. I've been there, and it's okay. You're allowed to do that. You need to let all your emotions flow. You need to let all your emotions be what they are. But just don't be stuck in those spots indefinitely. That's the key thing. Because I don't want to downsize um, the emotions we go through. Because we all go through them. We all have bad days. Uh, everyone in this house has gone through moments where we've just been struggling through this circumstance. But God is shining. I feel God moving. God is not done. God is talking to me. God is sharing with me. And I know that through this, we are going to come up and it's just going to be an explosion of goodness. And I'm excited for that. I'm excited to see what God is going to do with our family and to share that with you as we go. So who would like to win the Dave Ramsey book? This is going to be tricky because I'm on my own here and it requires me to do a couple things. And like I said, if you're watching and you haven't said, hey, I'm here, I don't know you're there. So you need to let me know that you are present so that I can be able to add you to the drawing. So if you are here, I'm going to give you some time to uh, put your name down there, say, hey, where are you from? And again, if you think people are going to gain from what I am sharing, please please share it with others. Um, I really need you guys to help me reach people because I feel there's a lot of lost and broken people in this world and all they need is encouragement and all they need is sharpened. And I feel like that is what God is calling me to do. And I, I sadly see us losing members of Treyer Wilderness on the Facebook page. And maybe that's just Facebook's antics. Maybe that's the enemy trying to persuade me, but he's not. I'm going to continue to do what I do, and I don't want to offend anybody that I talk about God, but God is what has got us through this. God has been shining in our lives so, so heavily, and it would, it would, I just can't not share my testimony and, and our walk. And I think it's really cool, too, that the power of prayer from you folks is shining, too, with Pat. Pat needs continued prayers. Pat is going to heal, and I'm excited. And I was just really excited today. It brought tears to my eyes to just feel the change in his text messages. I know that's silly, but I could feel him being in a really low place. So I'm real excited, and I'm really thankful for you guys being willing to pray for him. Please share it with others. Um, I'm 
I can't open this without it making my gums flap. <laughs> so then you hear me echoing. All right, so I'm going to try to do this and add you all. I have Tia, and I have Tammy, and I have Mike, and I have Jackie present right now. Do we have anybody else out there that is joining? And if you missed this giveaway, I want you to realize that there will be more. I have several other books that I will be giving away upcoming. And um, I love it when you guys share your stories. I also love it when you share your struggles because it just makes it real for everybody. That's the biggest thing is, you know, you got a lot of people out there educating, but they make it look so, like, like so unreachable. And... We're all in this together. We're all we're all one day at a timers trying to just muddle through. None of us are perfect and I just think we have a great community and I'm just so thankful for you guys. So we have Tia, Tammy, Jackie, Mike. Did I miss anybody? Let me make sure. How many of you follow Dave Ramsey as of right now? Do any of you currently follow his materials. His podcast is really good too. There's just always something to take away. And I'm, I'm one of those people that I love to take away as much as I can from a situation and uh, be able to learn as much as I can. And um, I also have noticed that as I'm doing my budgeting, I have, I, I'm the nerd. I do a lot of spreadsheets and I do a lot of tracking of things. And, um, I have tried different avenues, and like I said, sometimes we overcomplicate things. Pencil and paper can be sometimes the easiest, and also writing it and getting it out there on paper so that both you and your spouse can review it um, is really important. The other things I want to mention today is the importance of incorporating your children in this. Your children should, um, if they're young, have a jar that they can put their savings in. And maybe in that jar even have envelopes. That's what we did with the Mountain Boy. He had a savings envelope and a spending envelope. And then as he got older, we got a check, checking account for him. And he's responsible for balancing it and making sure everything's written in it and, and everything. And, um, you know, the mindset of everybody is that you need to have a credit card. And it is nice to have a credit card if you're away at college. and 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 you, But there are pre-filled credit cards available. So that if you have a child going to college, instead of them having a credit card to give you the security when they're away that they can take care of themselves, um, have a pre-loaded credit card that you can just put money onto. That way you're not going in debt. That way you don't have, per, you know, uh, interest and, and it just gets out of hand. It's hard enough sending them to college. It's costly. And that's where we can, you know, that's where the savings thing comes into play. And learning where to put that money so that when our kids do go to college that we aren't paying out the nose for forever or these kids don't have these horrendous bills for the rest of their lives. You know, we have it saved, and money compounds as it's in a in the spot being saved, and that's the important thing. And that's what Dave will teach you. But teaching our children is important. The Mountain Boy is doing a budget. He has been introduced to budgets a long time ago. I do use YNAB. Um, I find that to be very useful. It's um, trayerwilderness.com/slash YNAB. Dave Ramsey recommends the EveryDollar.com, and um, by being able to teach our children early how to spend money is really important because most kids today see us using a card and think that that card is endless and it's not and that's the biggest misconception mountain boy thought that even though i was using a debit card he still thought it was endless he wasn't totally they aren't wrapping their head around the concept that there's you're needing to put money in there to use that that's why using dave ramsey's Method is also really good with the envelopes. Um, he puts money in envelopes. So you have your grocery money, your fuel money in envelopes. And, you know, grocery money, once that money's gone, no more groceries for the month. You budget so much and you try to stay within those means. And the thing that he points out is that it's more of an emotional departure when you are handing cash rather than using the card. How many of you mindlessly go to the grocery store and you get a couple things and you don't even check to see what your total is. You just put your card in and then later you get home and you write the amount and you didn't even really pay attention to the amount that you purchased. Many people do that. And 
it's important that we have some kind of accountability or that we have some kind of feelings with our money. And definitely when you're spending with cash, you much more have that feeling than if you're using a debit card. So just help your children along. Teach them money skills. Teach them because we can't depend on other people to teach them. And if we want them to be successful, it's really important. And if they can start putting money away from like age 19 on, they will have themselves so set up and have that mental mindset that we didn't grow up with. I didn't grow up with tithing and saving. I wish I had. Seeing the amount that could be accumulated by putting $2,000 away from the age 19 to 26 and then letting it compound and the millions of dollars that are there when you're of retirement age, I wish I would have known that. I wish I would have understood that. I didn't. And, and those are the things that we can teach our kids to be better than we are because I don't see Social Security being available when our children reach that age. And even so, Social Security isn't going to take care of us the way we think it's going to. We need to be prepared, and that's why I am presenting this to you guys today because I feel it's so extremely important that we get a handle on this because most people are flubbering and struggling and having a hard time keeping it going when it fails. And I will be an accountability partner for anybody here listening that is trying to get their budget going and try to keep it working because it's nice when you can have somebody to reach out to. You know, there's lots of websites and things out there, but sometimes you, the answer to the question you have isn't there. So to have an accountability partner and somebody to bounce things off of and be able to get back on track instead of failing one more time, that's so important. And I'm happy to be that because we are going to get out of this spot and we are going to be just like Dave Ramsey where we will not end up back in this spot ever again. So... I have everybody entered in here. I am going to choose winner number two. And the way it works is I put the names in there randomly and then it is going to choose the person for me. So I'm going to pick the person number two. So who's ready to win the Dave Ramsey book and learn a little bit more about how you can get ahead with money? Give me some hearts there. So I know you're all out there still. And I still, I have Tammy, I have Tia, I have Jackie and Mike. And I thank you guys for joining me. And we will choose the winner now. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, number two, I don't know if you can see this. I'm going to see if you can see this. It's really bright. But there is Tia's name. Tia is number two. So, Tia, you are the winner. If you want to Facebook message me and um, provide me with your mailing address, I will get that out to you. And I look forward to seeing you more often, Tia. That You made my day today with your comments and also sharing your testimonial, and that's huge. And Tammy, you got it. Tammy says, I may have to take you up on that. That would be awesome because I'm going to need that accountability partner too. And sometimes I have questions too. If you have an accountant, sometimes the accountant is a good person to ask. I feel that no question is a dumb question. If you have the question and you can't get your mind around it, you're not going to get past it until you have that light bulb moment. And sometimes it's something so simple. Like I said, sometimes we overcomplicate things and um, we don't need to do that. We need to try to stay on track. The more we can stay on track, the more we can get past the financial struggle and, and have the, I love how Dave said it, the, the car drama and the, the grocery drama and the, the money drama, all that is gone when you get a handle on things and when you can keep producing forward. The same applies for coming up with plans on the homestead or in your home. Who does the chores? You know, us moms and dads, we end up doing a lot of the work. Our children can do things. It teaches them good skills. It, you know, having a little chart on the wall of who does what and what needs to get done this week so that we can figure out a plan. You know, all that stuff removes stress. And this is the biggest one of them. And Tia, congratulations. I'm excited for you. And guys, I've taken up a lot of your time today. But I want to remind you, Proverbs 27, 17. Sharpen somebody this week and this weekend and remember to do that you know we we have the ability to make such a difference in other people's lives if we're willing to stretch ourselves and that's sometimes just the thing we're out you know we don't want to get out of our comfort zone and 
I don't even have a comfort zone anymore. <laughs> and I know the mountain man doesn't anymore either. This year has, has worked us over and we just kind of do what we do. And it's a good thing to get to that point too, where you, you know, we've always jumped out of our comfort zone, but, um, and have done wild and crazy things. And I just want to encourage you guys to just, to just do it, you know, Oh, good deal. I'm glad, Tia. Happy tears for sure. I'm glad you're excited, and I'll get that out to you. And like I said before, and Tammy said as well, we'll be praying for you. Um, that's quite a challenge. And But like I said, you're already a warrior. That's clear. That's very clear. So keep your faith muscles growing. We grow them every day, and you're going to for the rest of your life. And it's amazing to think about it, because I know you've been through it too. You know that you could grow them any more or be through anything else that could actually grow your, your faith muscles more. But every day they're growing. And, you know, not always through the challenge. It's through the uh, goodness and the amazing things that happen and the, the God moments that we have. They're just awesome. They're just awesome. Um, and I, I encourage you guys to keep your eyes open and to see them because even through this storm, there have been so many blessings and I feel like I would have missed out so greatly if I wouldn't have seen them. And I realize in my heart that so many people miss them daily because they're too caught up in the, the $10. They're too worried about the $10 instead of in the 10 seconds. So don't miss out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say a prayer for us today. Dear Jesus, I just thank you for this beautiful day and these beautiful people and all that they share and, and go through. I, I just ask that you lift Tia up and continue to strengthen her with her challenges. And Lord, just continue to bless her with strong faith and give her the courage to walk what she needs to walk. And dear Jesus, we thank you so much for what you've done for Pat Kenny. That is just awesome and just makes my heart sing. Just continue to heal him, Lord. I want to see a miracle. I'm, I'm waiting for your miracle because I know you can do it, and he is such a godly man. And I see you working in him all the time. He is such a, a huge role model for me, and I just ask that you continue to heal him, Lord. I ask that you be with everybody present today and all those that watch on the replay and our audience, Lord, to just strengthen their faith, faith muscles and encourage them if they're stuck in the corner or on the couch or in bed to get up and to be diligent and to do their part and to strengthen themselves and be be willing to embrace their dreams and to see their future differently than what they might be stuck in right now. And Lord, I just ask that you wrap your loving arms around everyone and just bless them, help those in need, heal those in need, and strengthen those in need. And Lord, just... Uh, let them feel your presence. And Lord, I just thank you for what you're going to do. You guide me through these trainings every week and you provide the materials. And I'm just so thankful that you help me to reach more people for you. And Lord, just give everyone a good weekend and just thank you for what you're going to do in all of our lives. And I ask this in your holy and precious name. Amen. Jackie says, thank you for your faithfulness. Oh, you're very welcome. Um, I give him all the glory. It is just an amazing walk. Uh, these last three years, you know, I've, I've experienced hardships prior, and God has always been my rock, and I've seen his blessings. He's been showing me hearts since 2004, clearly showing me heart shapes all the time when, you know, I needed that extra encouragement that life was going to be good, you know, and... Oh, this last three years, though, it's just been such an amazing walk and an amazing feeling to be closer and closer and closer to Him. And, you know, even though we falter, we make mistakes, you know, we get fearful, learning what to use to pull yourself back out of those spots and to catch yourself being in that spot and to catch the enemy just poking at you, you know, and sending him to go pound sand and telling him to go back where he belongs. You know, it's just an awesome, awesome feeling. Um, if you guys have never watched it before, there's an amazing movie on prayer. It's by the Kendricks Brothers. It's called War Room. And you can find it by going to treyerwilderness.com slash war room. It's an amazing movie. If you struggle to pray or to have a communication with God, 
it all starts with just talking to him. I've told you before, I'll be anywhere in my house and just start talking to God. And my dogs are very accustomed to me talking to myself, or at least, you know, it would appear so. They're, they're so good and non-judgmental. At least they don't say what they're thinking. <laughs> but I pray to God all the time, out loud, in my head, you know. I thank him all the time. And that's the biggest thing too, guys, is thanking him for the wonderful things that he's done, but thanking him in advance for what he's going to do because it's always going to be amazing and he's always going to do something. It's just in his timing and by his choice because sometimes our choices aren't always what he has in mind and they, he has something better, always, always. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining me. Tia, congratulations. And guys, if you don't have this, get your hands on it. And uh, like I said, reach out to me. I will be your accountability partner if you need it. And the sheets links are down below. It's easy to get started in a budget. It might be overwhelming and confusing. If you have questions, don't hesitate because sometimes, like I said, things just, your mind just doesn't wrap around your needs or your, or what you need to accomplish. So don't hesitate. There's never a stupid question. I totally believe that. So, guys, have a fantastic rest of your day. Have a fantastic weekend. And remember, you are in control of you. You can control everything about you. And you have the ability to put your family in a really good place by budgeting and preparing. And, and learning to prepare in all aspects of your life, which we will continue to talk about.